This is the Marvel Multiverse Core Rulebook, and today we're going to be talking about how to create a rank 1 character that can create universes and traverse the multiverse. Now I know this sounds impossible. Rank 1 characters in the Marvel Multiverse RPG are supposed to be rookies, they're supposed to be just starting out in the superhero community. How are you going to be able to travel the multiverse and create universes just as a rank 1 character? Now, some of you may think that this doesn't even sound that crazy in the first place. You know, this game quite literally has a power called multiversal travel. So, clearly just use the surprising power trait on a rank 1 character. That character now can use the multiversal travel ability and you're done, right? Not quite. I'll explain the complexities as we go. Okay, so the symbiote origin is the key. The Symbiote Origin, found on page 56, doesn't have a minimum rank limitation like the Spirit of Vengeance Origin on page 56. A rank 1 character with the Symbiote Origin is treated as one rank higher, so as a rank 2 character, when they bind with their Symbiote. This means that they can spend 10 focus in one turn. Normally, rank 1 characters can only spend up to 5 focus in one turn. You can read more about spending focus on page 81. If they have the trait Surprising Power on page 62, they can have and use the Multiversal Travel Power, which you can read more about on page 110. This is because the Multiversal Travel Power, which is a power with a rank 3 prerequisite, which you can get around with the Surprising Power trait, has a 10 focus cost and a rank 1 character normally can't pay a 10 focus cost. But with the Symbiote Origin, your rank 1 character is now treated as a rank 2 character, so now with Surprising Power, you can not only have the Multiversal Travel Power, you can actually use it, you can actually spend the focus cost. Uh, so this is a big deal, especially because Multiversal Travel can be used to travel to What Ifs, which are described in detail on page 273. And What Ifs are described as literally universes that your characters can imagine or dream of. So now you have playable characters who can imagine whole universes and then travel to them at rank 1, which is insane. This character would have at least the following powers, Environmental Protection uh, on page 98, Mighty One on page 108, and Multiversal Travel. This character would have at least the following origins and traits. The Symbiote Origin, of course, uh, the Anathema Extreme Heat slash Extreme Sonics, which you can read more about on page 59, and Surprising Power. Now, let's kick things up a notch. It may be one thing to be a rank 1 character who can create universes from their imagination and travel to them, but can we make our characters quite literally symbiote gods? Well, yes. First build the character described above. Now sacrifice your last power for the extraordinary origin trait, which you can read more about on page 60, by using the extra power picks option, which you can read more about on page 67. Now, select the Mythic Asgardian origin or Mythic Olympian origin, both on page 56, which grants you the following tags and traits. Worshipped, which is on page 65, Supernatural, which is also on page 65, God Heritage on page 61, and Enhanced Physique on page 60. Your symbiote god can now carry, throw, lift, and swing things as if you're a size larger. It's essentially giving you super strength on top of the super strength you already have with Mighty One. Uh, now, that isn't necessarily true, and that is a mistake on the character sheet thing that I made. It's entirely up to you as a narrator, but the Enhanced Physique trait specifically says it doesn't stack with other things. So Enhanced Physique and Mighty One both kind of say, hey, uh, you're treated as a size larger when like carrying and swinging and throwing objects, right? So as a narrator, you can choose to kind of like ignore or stretch rules. If you want to play solely by the book, the enhanced physique thing is canceled out by the fact that the character has mighty one. So I just want to like lay that out there. If you want the abilities to stack, which is how it's written on the character sheet that I'm going to share with you guys, you guys can have them stack. But know that if you want to play by the book, Mighty One and Enhanced Physique, uh, they shouldn't stack with each other. Mighty One just kind of takes precedence. Regardless, 
as a god, your character can pick what they're the god of, which you could use to become the god of multiverse creation and multiverse travel. This is important because whatever you're the god of, whatever your divine domain is, you get an edge on. So if you're like the god of flowers, for say, because I have a character, uh, a player, who is playing as a god of flowers in an upcoming adventure that we're going to do, uh, they have an edge on on any action check involving like recalling knowledge of flowers or being able to identify like different types of flowers and stuff like that and i know flowers isn't necessarily the most exciting thing in the world but when you think about it these are characters who are literally gods who can create universes which means these universes could be full of like different types of flowers when you think of a flower you don't think of anything too crazy but they could quite literally just make up some super awesome magical flower and thanks to having an edge on all flower related checks now they're an expert at knowing how to use this super awesome magical flower uh so really awesome uh the edge thing is like quite interesting now let's jump into the character sheet so i created a self-insert symbiote god character sheet and i'm going to share it with you guys uh, so that you will be able to essentially hand these out to your players uh, they all will have identical character sheets because it's a self-insert character sheet, meaning that this character is just a self-insert version of the player, but with a symbiote and as a god of a particular divine domain, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so definitely click on the link in the description if you want to be able to play as this character or set your players up with this the only thing that you should change if you want to play solely by the book is the size section of the character sheet like i said uh the book says that these things don't stack enhanced physique and mighty one uh so the stuff i wrote down for size you can change that right uh, so there's more by the book. If you don't care and you think Mighty One and Enhanced Physique can stack with one another, feel free to just let it ride. But the size thing is legitimately kind of the only thing you would need to change. So real name, height, weight, gender, eyes, hair, all of those are the same as whatever the player is like. So the player character and the player are essentially like the same person, more or less. Uh, for their size, uh, their average size, but they're treated as big when carrying or throwing objects, and big characters can carry and throw objects up to the size of a car. If you want Enhanced Physique to stack with Mighty One, then you can say that when they're bound to their symbiote, their size is treated as huge, and they can carry and throw objects up to the size of a truck. Again, it is totally up to you as a narrator whether or not you let them stack or don't let them stack, but the game says they do not stack, so you can just say their size average treated as big when bound to symbiote. Totally up to you. Distinguishing features, uh, they have the same distinguishing features as the player. Their occupation is an outsider, which you can read more about on page 59. Uh, the origin stuff we went over earlier, they're not a part of any particular team, and they don't necessarily have their own base. History. An alternate version of yourself has manifested inside of a brand new version of the Marvel Universe. This alternate version of yourself has your memories and life experiences and is surprised to find themselves suddenly in this familiar but different version of the Marvel Universe. Luckily, in this universe, you are quite literally a god who has been further empowered by bonding with an alien symbiote. The symbiote you're bound to seems to be fairly knowledgeable about the multiverse, so you're free to ask your symbiote any questions you might have about the world around you. You also have worshippers that you can ask for help, but do know that they'll likely want help from you in return. Your godlike power gives you a lot of freedom. Feel free to use the power of your imagination and dreams to create entire universes, and your multiversal travel power, available on page 110 in order to travel to these universes on a whim. I include a little note in the history that says, your multiversal travel power costs 10 focus to use, and you're incapable of spending all of your focus. Uh, just so that it's easy for players to understand how the power works without having to constantly reference the book, as I imagine being a god who can create and travel to different multiverses, that power is going to be used quite a lot during the campaign. You also have an edge 
on completing action checks related to whatever you're the god of. Uh, well, all that edges is uh, you roll twice and you take the better of the two rolls. Um, and you can choose what your divine domain is, as long as that domain is not taken by another god. Uh, so you can just kind of have your players come up with what they're the god of, and you can choose whether or not that's already taken and they can't be the god of that thing. Um, or you can have them change it a little bit, maybe be more specific or less specific, and it allows them to be a god that's similar to another god, but distinctly their own. Workshop it with your players. Uh, this is the way that all of these characters can kind of be different. Every player in your session can be playing with this character sheet, but because all of the gods have to be gods of different things, they all will have their own unique flavor, similar to like an actual divine pantheon. Uh, so I think this is like perfect for getting players excited to play as gods. And if you think man, this is like too overpowered for rank one characters. They're like super strong and they can create universes and they can travel to them. Um, but they also have inherited weaknesses because of the fact that they're bound to symbiotes and they have to keep their symbiotes in order to actually be able to use the multiversal travel power in the first place. So you can position obstacles to take advantage of these weaknesses. And this is also included in the history section where it says, beware, you have a weakness against extreme heat and extreme sonics, which deals 1d6 times 3 damage to you every turn you're exposed to them, and you aren't able to willingly move toward your weakness. So you can't walk into an area with loud sounds on purpose, nor can you walk into an area with extreme heat on purpose. This will kind of allow you as the narrator to still present challenges to your players, even though your players, for all intents and purposes, are like quite literally gods that can like throw trucks and create universes and travel the multiverse. You know, you can still kind of rein them in a little bit. Plus, uh, when your characters are creating universes, anything they don't specify during the creation process, like when they're first imagining their world, is entirely up to you as the narrator to shape. If they didn't specify that something did or didn't exist in their universe, that doesn't mean that that element is absent. That just means it's open for you to control. So don't forget, even though they're creating universes, you are still the one who is in control of those universes at the end of the day. And the personality for the character, of course, is the same as the personality for the player. Uh, their traits and tags are surprising power, which is how they have access to the multiversal travel power in the first place. Extraordinary origin, that's how they have access to mythic Asgardian or mythic Olympian backstories. Uh, their connection is outsiders, and you could say that that outsider connection is their symbiote. They're able to ask their symbiote questions and gain more information about the world. Uh, they have the Fresh Eyes trait, which you can read more about on page 61. The Stranger trait, which you can read more about on page 62. The Enhanced Physique trait, which you can read more about on page 60. Uh, though it can be argued whether or not the Enhanced Physique trait really matters because they have Mighty One. It really depends on if you're the kind of DM that thinks that Enhanced Physique should or shouldn't stack. If you think that it shouldn't stack because the book says it shouldn't stack, then Enhanced Physique really doesn't matter that much. You can kind of ignore it. Your characters already have Mighty One. If you think it should stack, then it's like kind of a more important thing. Again, all you really have to change if you don't like the stacking mechanic that I have on the character sheet is just to change that size aspect. But moving on from there, uh, they also have the Anathema trait. I can't remember if Anathema is a trait or a tag. Regardless, uh, extreme heat and extreme sonics are a weakness for your player characters. You can read more about that on page 59. Uh, their powers are multiversal travel, mighty one, and environmental protection. Uh, there are a rank one character still. They're just treated as rank two because they're bound to a symbiote. They have one karma, but I guess you can argue when they're symbiote bound, they have two karma. Uh, the book doesn't really help with how building a character works when they're technically one rank, but their origin boosts their rank. So I'm still building this whole character around the concept that they're like rank one, but technically rank two. So you're going to see multiple instances of this 
this is the value, but when bound to a symbiote, I guess it's really this. Uh, they have 30 health, uh, no damage reduction, 60 focus, uh, no focus damage reduction, run speed of 5, climb, swim, and jump speed are all three. Uh, so if your character's like, how fast is my jump? You can say similar to the other things, uh, three. Uh, their initiative modifier is two. Uh, their melee stat is one, melee defense 11, melee non-combat ability score modifier two, uh, melee damage, marvel die times two plus one, and for all of the damages, uh, you add one to the damage multiplier when they're bound to their symbiote. Uh, because it directly affects the damage multiplier. Agility 0, Agility Defense 10, Agility Non-Combat Modifier 0, Agility Damage, Marvel Die times 1 plus 0, Resilience 1, Resilience Defense 11, Resilience Non-Combat Ability Modifier plus 1, Resilience Damage, Marvel Die times 1 plus 1, Vigilance 2, Vigilance Defense 12, Vigilance Non-Combat Modifier 2, Vigilance damage, Marvel die times 1, plus 2. Ego, 1. Ego defense, 11. Ego non-combat, 1. Ego damage, Marvel die times 1, plus 1. Logic, 0. Logic defense, 10. Logic non-combat, 0. Logic damage, Marvel die times 1, plus 0. Add 1 to damage multiplier when bound to symbiote. And that add one to damage multiplier when bound to symbiote is true for all of the damages for all the stats. I didn't read it every time, but it's true for each and every one of the stats. And you can see it on screen. Uh, so if you want, you can copy what you see here on screen, uh, all the stuff that I just read. But there should be a link in the description to paste bin where you can just get a plain text version of this character sheet. And you can just send that link to all of your players ask them uh, what do you want to be the god of none of you can be the god of the same thing have your players figure that out and then you can set them off on an adventure uh, i also think this works really well for narrators who want to just see what their players are going to do with what's at their disposal uh, this probably isn't the easiest for narrators who want to have a structured adventure that's going to go in a very specific direction because players are likely going to be coming up with different universe ideas throughout the campaign and traveling to the different universes they create and they're going to want to dive into these worlds that they've made uh, maybe find more worshipers in these different universes that they create establish homes in these different universes they create and protect these different universes they create um, if you're looking for ideas on how to challenge these godlike beings, again, they're weak to fire and extreme sonics. Um, you also can establish that certain enemy forces are just prevalent across the entire multiverse. So regardless of what they do when they create a universe, uh, AIM still wants to take over the world. No matter what universe it is, something like AIM just always exists as like a constant. So you'll always have to deal with different AIM agents in different universes and have to fight back against AIM who are going to try and take over the universe that you've created. Or you can say the hand. Uh, the hand is described in the book as kind of controlling the world from the shadows. So you could say like every universe, regardless of anything, the hand is like pulling the strings from the shadows. Uh, so whenever you create a new universe, you still have to deal with like the aim and hand if you want to do stuff like that. That's totally fine. Um, but what are you guys' thoughts on this build? Does it make sense with the rules of the game? Do you think you're going to set up adventures where your characters like play as this? Um, I already have a couple players who are excited to play with this like godlike build, and we're planning on doing an adventure soon. Uh, I believe like this coming Wednesday using this. Um, do you think your players would be excited for it? Do you think your narrators would hate or love this idea? Definitely let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all once again for watching. This is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one only logging out. Peace. Check it out.